Okay, now you, son. Cock your head to the left just a little bit. And turn it right just a hit. Perfect. Uncle Benny, lower your head a little bit. I don't want any flashback in my glasses. Good, on three, hold it. One, two, three, good. One more and we're done. Just stay there, dear. Perfect. Do you do? How you doing, Mr. Mr. Cobb? All right. Good to see you today. God, to me, is the people's need to explain the unexplainable. And it began generations ago. They had the multi, they had the multi gods. To they had a god for the lightning and a god for the rain and a god for fertility and a god for every aspect of life. Then along came the Hebrews and said. No, there is only one God. And it is because of this one God that we can explain our suffering because he is going to take us out of this suffering and bring us to a land of, quote, unquote, milk and honey. And so a God that would explain their misery or their happiness and give the unexplainable a plausible answer became a God. I do not believe in God. O one and only God, you have made each of us unique, formed us to be united in one family of life. Be with us, Eternal One, as we seek to unite our lives with your power and your love. We proclaim now your oneness and our own hope for unity. We acclaim your creative power in the universe and in ourselves, the law that binds world to world and heart to heart. Together. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Baruch Shem Kibod Machuta Leolam Bred. Blessed is his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Michael Kudish, Howard Nager, Adam Katz. And Amy. And Amy. And Amy. David Weintraub and Jeffrey Curson. Okay, that's it for today. Okay, now I'd like you all to say the Shema all I, together. Okay. Shema Yisroel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And Mandy, can you tell us what that means in English? Hero Mandy, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Very good. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. I really don't think I believe in a personal God in the sense of, of a God up there uh, controlling our life on earth. Um, at times I don't believe in God at all. Okay, so now we've got our Torah and we've put it in the ark. Okay, and now what happens at the temple? Who do we see when we go to the temple? The rabbi. The rabbi.
to draw me a nice picture of the temple with everything in it. Okay. With menorah and Torah. Can I do menorah and Torah? You can make the ark. Yes, they do run. I was waiting to see if somebody knew that. God isn't in temple. He's not there. I don't know if he's in the universe watching us. I don't think he's there either. I'm trying to think, where is God? All I can think of is when I close my eyes, that's when I see God. That's when he's there. And sometimes when I was little, I think I used to connect it to a Superman. You know, because Superman is, is this person or being that's invulnerable. And so God is invulnerable, you know. So that's trying to get a person to be like God. But that's not even a person, a superhuman being. I don't know. Uh, I don't believe in God as, as a person who's sitting somewhere, uh, running things, because I, I just... I was a world woman. Well, that's what I, I think it's, it's, it's science, it's it evolution. I, I, I don't know. But I think maybe, Good. I really don't know the answers to those questions, maybe. I know, I no, don't either, I was just kidding. If someone, so I mean, maybe it's very possible that God began the world. I, I wouldn't dispute it. it sounds reasonable, yeah. you know, if you look at it, uh, yeah. basically. But I, I just think maybe, maybe God gave us all, if there is a God, maybe he gave us all, I hope, something a little good. You know? Well, we're not all bad. No. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's my, sure, you do. We should have had this conversation before we got married. <laughs> oh, no. No. The all American Afro. Oh. oh, what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's not crowded yet, guys. I know, we're coming back. <laughs> Go over to the goodie table and take all the pictures. Hello. There, there. I'm in trouble. Oh, I just think he's, he floats around everywhere and just watches over us. And just makes, just watches. He doesn't do anything. Why don't you think he does anything? Because he's never said that he does anything. I mean, he doesn't leave his name when a miracle happens or something. Do you believe in miracles? Not really. They're just like little, little things that happen and they're blown up over the years. May the God who watch you during your years of childhood continue to watch and keep over you. I was not here before I was born. I am here now to do the best that I can with my life, to try to make the people I meet and my family as comfortable and as, as happy as I can. And when I'm gone, I'll be gone. That's all. And life will close in around the 
space that I was in. I often have that thought too when I, especially when my children were little and I put them to bed and I'd sit up in the bay window and look out on the, on the trees or the snow and wonder about someday someone else will be here and I won't be here anymore and someone else will see this snow or these trees or this rain and I'll no longer be here. And it's a, it's a strange feeling and yet it's the way life is. What's going to happen when I die? What's going to happen to the soul? Or what's it? I, Everything. I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you. What were you saying? I said the worms crawl in the worms Forever. crawl <laughs> What does that mean? They turn, you know what they say when you die. They, they turn your guts into sauerkraut. We used to sing that when we were kids. What is that? I'm sorry. Uh, the worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. They turn your guts into sauerkraut. We used to sing that when we were, kid, when we were kids. Fine. <laughs> I never thought of that, sir. I'm mm -hmm. being serious. I never did. I never gave you any thought. Yeah. Maybe it's a fear. Maybe you know. I, I don't want to think about it. I don't know. But it, I just don't. I really don't. Do you? I, I just think you die. I mean, I think that's it. But I, maybe I'm. You know, maybe we'll be surprised. <laughs> Item number three eighty-three: a canoe. Seventeen hundred. Must be a series. It's a five hundred. something that put this whole thing together and you know you can look and say well how could the birds be there in the trees and all the stuff without something so I believe that there is something it's not just a, a physical force what it is I don't know and I've decided I'm not gonna bother myself with it I think it's really you know it, 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 it's almost honest it's ridiculous to, to keep thinking about these things over and over I've been going to a, to a class at the temple and hearing the rabbi trying to make sense of it all. We can't make sense of it all, so I'd rather spend my time and effort thinking about something else, thinking about, uh, you know, philosophical things on what's good on, on this earth, how to, how to, how should you react to your fellow, fellow man? I mean, is it important to, to have more at home or to give more to charity? How much uh, should you be out hustling to make a buck, and how much should you be out helping some poor black guy down in Roxbury. I'd rather struggle with those things in the X number of time hours I've got to struggle with things. So then to take it to answer the other question one step further, when I die, I don't know. I used to think there was this great big heaven and all this thing. And Bonnie has helped, not helped, I don't know. Bonnie has made me think less of that. And I come a little bit closer to what she's thinking. I, again, hope that you know, like she's hoped that she's wrong. I hope she's wrong, too. I hope there is something out there. But I will tell you, when my dad died and I went and saw him in that box, at that moment, I really thought, man, that was it. And so, I mean, that's when, uh, that is one time that, uh, 
you know, something hit me and I said, hey boy, things are really, it's a bunch of malarkey. They're going to be in that hole and it's six foot down and that's Gazunski. So that's about the way I feel now. Maybe I'm made up of many dead people there. When they died, they all went to this fourth dimension and part of them is re reincarnated each day and I'm like a hundred different people. So when I die, all those hundred different people have come together to make me. So I'll just be another person and then part of me will be reincarnated every day. This is 10 ounce, again, fine silver by Engelhardt, 0.999, whatever it is, $125 opening bid on this, 10 times 20, what you just paid was 200. Opening bid of 125. 125 I have, do I have 150? 125 going once, do I have 150? Just paid 200. How about 135? 125, 135 I have, do I have 140? 135 going once, 135 going twice, 140 I have. Just start away, look how much room it takes. 140 I have, do I have 145? 140 going once, 140 twice, 145 I have, do I have 150? You want to know the weight, you want to know the weight. I have, do I have 155? 150 going once, 150 I'll going twice, 155 I have, I have 160. 160 I have, do I have 170? 160, 170 I have, do I have 175? 175 I have back here, do I have 180? 175 going once, 175 going twice. Sold for 175. Mark is sold. Mark is sister. Oh, it was wonderful. Just wonderful. We're going to come next year for your apartment. All right? Oh, I'm sure. Mazel tov, Mr. Schwartz. Mazel tov, Mr. Schwartz. He did a good job. Very good. Grace, so nice to see you. How did you make it all night? I am married in about uh, under four hours. We got up at six o'clock. Oh, it's great. It's great. Oh, but it's wonderful. Wonderful. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. seen any evidence of any uh, afterlife around me. I've had uh, grandparents die. They're dead. I miss them. I think about them. But I really have no sense that they're out there somewhere. They're gone. Their memory lives. I can accept that. And I think uh, Judaism tells us that. Uh, we live on, on, on earth in the acts that we have performed while we were alive. If you can do some good, maybe someone will remember you. Maybe you'll influence someone's life. Maybe that's a chain reaction. And in that sense, I can believe in, in, in your name living on. But that's as far as I can go. Okay, very soon, there's a holiday coming up called Tu Bishvat. Okay, and that's a holiday of trees. And what people do at that time is buy trees in honor of somebody or in somebody's memory. Like if somebody has died, a, na a tree will be planted in that person's name. Like Emily told me her, grand her great grandfather had died. Maybe they'd want to buy a tree in his name and have it planted in Israel. Because it was a time when Israel didn't have many trees at all. So now every year at this time, we buy trees to plant in Israel. The universe as a whole, I see it as infinite. I'm sure that I feel that there are uh, vast distances that we have yet to encounter. Perhaps not in my lifetime, but at some time, man will discover something beyond our universe and where it began or 
how it evolved, I cannot answer any more than can most of the scientists who spend their lives studying it. I think that we are only a small part of what is somewhere out there. That is our universe, which is quite vast, is only a small part of all that there is. Hi, Mom. How are you? And this is my dad. Hi, Dad. Say hello. Oh, who's Kay? Hi, this is my father. Hi, Dad. How are you doing? Great. I know my mom. You're going to take a picture now. So let me... Uh, Very good. Okay, if you move, watch my fingers. I'm going to shoot precisely on... All right. All right. I think that, there, that we are here and there are probably other planets like Earth out in the stars somewhere. I don't really try and think about that. I, mean, I start thinking and then it's just too much, so I just stop. Why do you stop thinking? Because it's so hard to imagine that there are so many other planets out there and other people like us. Well, sometimes I think of it as uh, a very intricate, scientific accident almost, or just, um, you know, physical uh, forces that acted upon the earth and evolved to human beings in the state we are now in. Do you believe that there was a source of those scientific, that scientific accident? How did that begin? How did, was there the initial matter? What do you think? Some kind of a prime mover? I really don't. Uh, just um, chance happenings in the physical universe. Chance happenings in the physical yes. universe? Yes, and yet I realize sometimes when you sit back and look at it and you think, how could such an intricate system of life have evolved by chance? I can't answer that, but I also can't envision any spiritual force that started the physical life on Earth. We are going to introduce you to two very nice people I've just had the pleasure of meeting, but you've known them a long, long time. They are your host and hostess for this afternoon. Please welcome Estelle and Harold Lander on a wonderful day like today. Your 
promised for boy himself. Please welcome Mr. Jonathan Paul Linder. <laughs> Oftentimes in other cities, I have stopped on a street <clears throat> and watched people running about uh, intent on their own destinations, intent on their own purpose, and thought, I am out of context with my own habitat and environs. And to these people, way off in another city, their habitat, their destinations, their environs, are vitally important to them. And no one here knows me, and I am so insignificant. If I were not here, it would not matter. And I get this awesome feeling of the unimportance of all of it. <laughs> 